so long. Boss talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. Woo. We be on fire, we be lit lit. lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big, big shit. Hey. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big shit. Woo. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Who gon' bring it to the table? Boss talk. Who your girlfriend fave? Check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy E, CEO. And I'm here with the lovely official, Mr. Jamaica. You don't know what's going on. E, man, check it, man. Hey, man, today is a special day, bro. You know, uh, I get excited when certain things happen, man. I'm re- You guys know how I am about East Texas, too, man. It's a whole history <laughs> thing going on in there. Hey, man, check it, man. Y'all done heard of this guy right here, man. You probably heard his music when you were trying to jam out. Over the years, man, I done seen this guy go through a lot of different places, enjoying time, creating that entertainment vibe, man. Check it, man. Mr. K-Rock himself is in the building. In the building. What's good? What's good? What's cracking? Hey, man, everything cracking right now, man. God is good. You know what I'm saying? Man, say, man. So do you do these often, man? These interviews, man. I mean, I, I, I'm being honest, like I said earlier, you know, it just started popping off for me. You know what really? I'm saying? I, I've always stuck to more of the hands-on uh, part of the industry. You know, okay. like I said, I really wasn't always in just into the media. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I really wasn't just into the media as far as, you know, how things are now as far as trending. Yeah. So one of one of I recently got back into it, got into it and I was like, oh okay, there's a lot of people out here want to hear what I got to say. Yeah. Yeah. So and then I had to, you know, say to myself, okay, I got something I got to say. I have a story, got a testimony. The so, backstory series. Say man, when they when they when they call, I'm coming. Hey man, I'm just glad I got you, man. You know me, yeah. I'm I'm trying to capture the city in the right way. And and so one thing, little Ronnie told me the other night. He say. Be very particular about who you we bring on the show. Right. It's because it means something. Right. And yeah. Every, every, everything's about energy and vibe. Now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What you And then about? we're using this platform to educate people. Mostly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because Help there's so you. many people out here who want to be where you are today but don't know how to go by it. Or there's things that you've been through in your life in the past that you overcame and someone else is going through it and struggling through it and right. don't know how to overcome it. And I just pray that they listen to our platform and get something constructive from it right. because there's so many people out here. Podcast is a new thing, the new TV. Right. But there's but in this generation, negativity is what sells. Just like people always said, sex sells. Mm-hmm. Negativity is what gives you rating. The clout, or chasers, or whatever. We don't want that. We don't want to no. be that. We just want to help. Um, help. People, yeah, exactly. That's what it's so all that's about what we, for us. We are using this well, platform. I mean, for you know, on a, <laughs> on, on a spiritual level, you know, to be real about it, you know, what I'm saying you can go so far, for so long, then you're gonna have to get right sooner or later. That's anyway, it. that's it. And I've always said, you know. I'm going to be on the right side of this situation. Whenever it go down, I'm going to make sure I'm on the right side of the situation. We all want that. And, and, yeah. and, 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 and it has come from me going through what I have gone through uh, in, in these years in this, in, in this business and in this career. I want to, I want to, I want to talk. I want to take you back, man. Let's let's go to the first, man. Let's get. Man. To, I want. I want to go all the way back, man. I'm going home, her. home. I'm going home, man. Yeah. I'm going home. I want to. I want. I want you to tell me how this thing started. When you said home, where exactly are you from? Talk to him. I am originally from Oak Cliff. Okay. 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 That's crazy. I was, now I well, was. I'm, my mother and my father was. Like they weren't a Bonnie and Clyde type. They were just always out. They were young. My mother was pregnant. I was born in Gladewater Hospital. How old was she when she had you? My mother was 26 years old. Okay, so she wow. wasn't that young. She, so she was, it's, you know, it's... Uh, Where's Gladewater? In Gladewater. In Gladewater. So, they actually stayed... I, I, they, I, had, I got kinfolk in uh, Gladewater as well. They stayed there for like a few days. Then they ended up... We, they moved to Dallas. For okay. a few days. <laughs> yeah, for a few days. Because, uh, you know, I never did get the story... I'm about to ask my dad too. <laughs> you gotta ask I didn't, him. I didn't ever get the actual story, but I know that they had moved to Dallas. They raised me up until uh, about four years. Uh, I could turn four years old. Then my brother Tony was born. But uh, my first 15 years, 
was here in Eau Claire. In Eau Claire. I did not know that. Yeah, my, I didn't my, know that. Right. My family, my mother, my grandmother, my grandfather, my mother's side of family was from East Texas. Okay. That's how you ended up right. back in my life. Right. There it is right okay. there. So when, when, when mom and dad split when I was 15, my mother got saved. She said, look, she had a vision that if I don't get my boys from here, they're not going to turn out right. Okay. okay. So we left Dallas when I was 15. Tony was 11. Moved out to East Texas. Moved in with my grandma. How did you feel about that? Because Was that in Longview? At, at, in Longview. At 15, at the, at, you have friends 15, and you have man, a life look, and look, I took it. I took it. it, it I, I started. I, I, I remember I started being rebellious yeah, I because so. I, I was doing so well in school. I had a lot of friends. I had a reputation for being goofy. You know, that's <laughs> every, my nickname back in the day was Wino because I always was goofy. I always got in trouble in class. Class my, clown. Class clown. But your my, grades was good. My grades was good. Okay. I, um, I remember we moved to East Texas. I was going through a change. At the same time, that's when hip hop okay. was born. Okay. Okay. Now we all know when hip hop was born, it took everybody by surprise. Like this thing of expression. He's rapping. He's DJing. Mm -hmm. They're dancing. Like mm -hmm. they're seeing this mm -hmm. on street corners and things. That's how I started. Yeah. That was my outlet. I would go to school, come home, change my clothes, I'm gone. Go dance. Go dance. I'm breaking somewhere. Are you good? Yeah. <laughs> like, I was. You didn't do. I tell you, if he was good, I'm old man. If look. he couldn't do the windmill, okay, I got. I got. Did you and I, I used to do be, the windmill? Man, I would windmill crazy. No hands. I used to look, do the windmill. Nah, look, you ain't did no, no hands, windmill. Handcuffs. I ain't no way you did no dogs, windmill. Raggedy she man. said she used to do the windmill. Could man, you, she, say, just, come on, my dude. Say, you know how hard the windmill is. <laughs> you know what though? That was the thing about hip hop. Hip hop hit us. It was more male, male dominated. Right. But then all of a sudden, you the know, females. what 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 came out with the females, you had the few females that danced, but the ones that broke that door open, MC Light. Right. That's my dog. Queen Latifah. I tried to tell people about this you the know, other day, didn't I? They so came into the hip hop when it was hip hop. That's why sure everybody did. was like, and then they, they, people and don't were forget amazed because it was a female. No, you got to say Roxanne and Shantae. Real, Roxanne and Shantae. You got to say that. Most definitely. What's that, you know, one, what's that one with that voice? Which one? That 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 tiny voice. What's Michelle A. Yeah. Michelle A. <laughs> Michelle A. Michelle A. Kind of R and B is too yeah, though. She came. She came in on the second, second generation phase. of sure hip hop okay. because that's when hip hop transformed to the point where I can say what I want. I got freedom of speech. Then that's when you know the critical. That's when it took that critical turn. Now I'm cussing. I'm gonna say what I want. You know this. It went to that point. Yeah. Well, you see, when so, you're talking about hip hop, uh, especially for females. Um, back then, to me, everything was so lyrical. Now, what do you think about the change of um, what's going on? Man. What's your views on that? Lyrical-wise, well. Compared to everything everything nowadays is sex, sex, sex. Okay, you know so what I mean? the thing, I'm going to tell you what I like about what hip-hop brings to the table right now. Right now, I'm hearing artists tell their story through their music. Mm -hmm. So I understand that point of view of the situation. I also like the situation because it put an artist in a, in, a, in, a, in a position to be financially stable. You got a lot of artists that started out one way, came into this situation, and stuck with this situation and ran with it. Mm -hmm. Knowing that the other situation... You know, you got two ways you're going to go with that. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the street you. life is not. I've always told everyone, if, if when you say you got it out the mud, okay, then you should have been and got out the mud and got the mud off of you. You see what I'm saying? Because if you got out the mud and you had a certain point, there comes a certain point in time where you got to let one thing go in order to go forward and the other. It's hard to do. But then it's okay. it is hard it's to do. It's hard because to we do. Had, we had a person on here the other day who was talking about um, an artist. Well, they weren't on this platform, but we're speaking to them. And they were talking about an artist who is very, very talented. But they're in the street. Right. And, you like and it. it's like he can't let the street go. It's but hard. But everybody's telling him how good he is. And he can be one of the greats. But... He's right. like, well, I'm making money here. I can't. How much? This is what I'm comfortable and the, at. And the thing about it is, I mean, to cut you off, I've, 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 I have been counseling 
different artists. And when I say that, it's like I run into them. Hey, OG, I got to holler at you about something. And I always tell them, sooner or later, you're going to have to let one of them go. Um, it's hard to pay attention to the blessings that come from one end when the other situation is steady pulling at you. Right. Young Jesus said it. Young right. Jesus said, in this game, you got to know what to take with you when you make that move, and you got to know what to leave behind. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, certain people, places, you know, these are certain people that's going to keep you here, but mm -hmm. your situation with others, when you make this move, is going to take you somewhere else. A lot of times that's a situation that ends up being something that that person has to go through that God probably has sought up. Now, part of making things happen is, like, I try to play my part. I try not to turn no one around. Yeah. So when they come to me for that advice, I'm going to give them what I can give them or what they ask for. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I consider that playing my part. Now, it might take another person to tell them something then it might take a situation for it to all of a sudden happen for this person, for them to make that change. That means whatever they went through and the parts we played in it, we did what we were supposed to do. Okay. And, you know, being the OG, I realized I have to do that. That's it, it, For God to allow me to be like that, I got to do it the right way. Okay. I can't steer a person left when I'm supposed to steer them right. Mm -hmm. And I know what right, I, I, I've been here. I've been there. I know what this is. So... I really be trying to get them from this point to that point. That's what's up. But sometimes and they got to bump their head. Sometimes it's not for you to. Exactly. And I learned that in life because when you care about somebody and you, you see how good they can do, you're like, you want to tell them something and you want to do what you tell them to do. But I've learned in my experience, and God has opened up my eyes with this, is the fact that you plant the seed and let it go because right. I've seen where later on in life, as much as they had to go through 10 more things before they realized yep. it, Whatever you tell them, they'll never forget it. God will bring it to their remembrance when mm -hmm. it's time yep. for them to remember. And that's what I'm, I have learned how to let that go. I'm a witness go. of that. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm a witness of that. Yep. So let me get back over into that. Uh, the, so you get to East Texas. Uh, how did you get to this DJ and thing? We got to get there. Well, we were break dancing. It was it, it, we had a little group called East Texas Floor Rocker. Shout out to uh, uh, Spider Man. Okay. Spider. Uh, Philip Washington is his name. He's over in Big Sandy right now. He's really the reason why. I'm Philip at, Washington, shout out, baby. Yeah, man. Uh, Spiderville, he's on all platforms. My boy's still doing his thing. Spiderville, check it out, man. What's that boy named Walter? Walter, you don't know from nothing Big about Sandy. that. You from don't know Big nothing about Sandy. that. He's from Big Sandy, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he out there in Big Sandy. He's originally from East. He's originally from Longview, too. Well, you know, we, when we were young, we got out here, we started dancing. We started making money, which open up another door from dancing to the DJ aspect. Okay. Um, I end up DJing because we were all a group, you know, trans transforming from breakdancing to DJing. Uh, we all got a little trouble back in the day. Yeah, yeah. They end up leaving, you know, they end up doing some time or whatever. What year was that? Uh, 84. Okay, 84, 85. It was 84, 85 because I remember in 85, after, you know, while they were gone, I was on my own in my mind. And now, mind you now, at this time, my in, my influences was Dr. Rock on K-104. Okay, yeah, because he was DJ popping Uche, back then. He was popping back yeah, then. Yeah, DJ so, Uche. You mind you now, I'm a, I'm a young cat in this DJ game getting all my energy and my influence from my listening You couldn't barely get the channel, though. You couldn't barely get the channel. Get the channel. But, at, but, you know, mind you now, <laughs> we talking about a youngster that's, 15, 16 years old, then you know, had to be in the house when the street lights came yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my fun was in my room with that radio on listening to Dr. Rock. Yeah. And all that. That morning, I hate that, to go to work and all that. That was uh, that was actually after that. I actually went to sleep on Dr. Rock. I, I you know, I had came, that's when. That when they do the mixes. When he was doing the mixes. I know what you're talking <laughs> about, then, baby. And what really got me is when they start broadcasting from the club, I was like, man. I wish I could do that, you know? Wow. It was like a dream, like, I wish I could do that, you know? And uh, so. I oh, carried, yeah. all of that influence, I carried it being K-Rock in East Texas, not realizing, say, you're the only dude out here really rocking like what you, I didn't know this. Yeah. I got my name from a, one of my partners I went to school with. He always, my name used to be DJ Cutmaster D. 
Cutmaster D in the building. That's that used to be my name. name. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Cutmaster D. I like D. it because when I Google K Rock, you know how many K Rocks pop up? It's a gang of them out there, man. Uh, oh, shout out to the original K Rock, the one I know, MC Lights DJ. Okay, oh, okay. okay. He was the he's the original K Rock that I know. So is that where you got your name from? No, I'm, I'm, I'm classmate. My classmate coming no, to no, club. No, no, no. But he called you that. But well, what it was, my breakdance name was was Cutmaster Dino. Right. So I I went, you know, it was basically the same, but it was Cutmaster D because when I first started DJing, I was a scratcher. Like scratch, scratch, you know, mix, scratch, Yeah, scratch, yeah, scratch. yeah. Never did talk. You know, that's my thing. So like I said, this all began with hip hop. So I was the, like, I'm not going to say I was the first to do it. I was the first to do it when everybody could see it. Like yeah. they come to the club and like, ooh, he really scratching. You know, <laughs> I was really one of the only ones at that time. What club? I started Talking about the first one. The very first club, Dreamland Inn. Dreamland Inn in Longview. In Longview. Killing it. Bro, it's a it's a whole it's in a whole the wall. The club is gone. Oh it's yeah, it's like gone. What year was that? Uh that was eighty five. Eighty five. In the midst of eighty five, man named Rosella Smiles walked up in the Dreamland Inn one night and uh he said, Boy, you Joe B. Jamie, would you come over by my club and DJ at my club? I'm like, okay. Club was called a Tuxedo Club. Okay. It was a double wide trailer he had put together and made a club out of it. <laughs> I never been to it. That man, the, the, the thing about Miles, he put me in a position where I really wanted to take off because he was really paying me some money. Like, yeah, he yeah. was paying me money. Yeah. And that kind of bled over into AM radio. We had an AM radio station called 1280 Jams in Long okay, at okay. that time. Uh, another classmate, a friend of mine that DJ, his name is Cedric Jackson. He used to go by the name of DJ Nasty. Okay, okay. He was on the air there. He got me hooked up there. Uh, AM radio. Still not realizing, say, you doing it. I wasn't realizing. No, I'm, no, just, no. I'm just, I was so excited to DJ. To do it. To just I do it. I didn't know what I was setting in place for myself. Because that went from. And how old were you? Uh, at that time, I was. Let's see, Junior was born on 21. I was 20, 21, 22. Oh, so you already had a son at that time. Uh, I, yeah, yeah, I had a son at that time. Okay. I sure did. Um, that was my first born. Um, I remember AM radio took me from there to the Bawana Club. Uh, you know that's me. what it was... I used to go out in Marshall, like after I DJed in Longview. You went to the Imperial Club? We used to go to the Imperial Club I already first. know. End up DJing there. Yeah, you knew Baby D. Man. Shout out Baby D. Save, man. You know Big Baby D. Derek, D. Man, save. He, hey, hey, he, he be just Mar with it. Look, he in Marshall my guy. showing out right now. Right What's now. It's going down. He, he going to trip when he see this. I'm going to tell you, man. look, he going to trip for real because when, when he got back, we linked back up. I went hey, down there he came to Dallas straight to me. Yeah, yeah first person, I, I, I one of the first people. He got people. a little spot out there. He got it right off 59 yeah, right now. I, I, I've been, been down there twice. <laughs> you been to I've it? I've been down there twice. Shout out, man. Baby hey. D, man. Me and Baby D got storage. Yeah. I'm going to have to get him on here. He Did coming. Did you play when you yeah. went down there? Did you do all your Yeah, DJ when okay. I went down there. We, See, I was going through technical difficulties, but yeah, we made I got you, baby. D coming. He going to be like, oh, man, I got to get on there. Yeah, that's my boy, man. That's my boy, man. And we got stories, but we can't tell them man, stories on here. here. We got, hey, we can't we tell all, them we stories really on here. We really do have stories, We can't bro. tell them stories but on here. You know what? I'm going yeah. to say this, and I'm going to keep it 100. You know, we all started somewhere. Yeah. But it's about where you end up. That's you know it, what I'm that's saying? And, and that's the thing that I really be trying to coach to the youth. Like, you know, I'm a person that understands what you're doing and what you're going through because I've been there. But let me show you. Let me turn you on to something how it's going to turn out if you stick with that versus if you try this. You know what I'm saying? I'm a living witness. You know, I make, I'm looking at it. I make boss talk all the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I know people need it, man. It's, there's no there's no absolute reason why I shouldn't have a conversation with a youngster that I don't know that's going to benefit him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know how to talk to you to keep you interested in him. I'm not going to sit up and talk to you like I'm your daddy. No, 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 no. I'm going right. to talk to you like we talk to each other like we, if we out on the street. Like the homeboy code. Now I got your attention. I'm just going to give you this game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's free. I ain't got a man. Ain't finna, what I'm going to charge you for? I'm going to give you something that might change your life. Now, let me ask you this. Did you meet 
Charles, or did you meet Rory to be DJing at the club? I met Rory first. Okay, all right. I met Rory first. See, I'm going in. I know That's this boy, boy, man. I still love him, too, boy. I talked to him one day, man. Love, Rory, I, shout out Rory, man. But one of man, a fucking roll club. Look, man. Let's sorry. go. <laughs> yeah. look, Rory taught me how to DJ and look good at it. Oh, he walked across that flow. Say, look here, bro. I always was on, bro, was on always point. on point. And the white vet when was you go, Look, when you go on the DJ booth, you didn't have wires running everywhere and all that. Rory had everything neat, and that I, that's how I am to this day. Really? I got that from him. He always said, man, you got to look good at what you do. You got to look good at what you do. <laughs> and you know, back then, my boy, he, you know, he papered hey, up. You oh, know he had what the saying? bed, he had the, the truck. The truck yeah. with the top cut yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and that was my boy. Yes, sir. But, the, the you know, it, me and him were partners, but I was a friend of the families as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His sister, his mother, his father. His father loved me to death. Oh, yeah, that's all. So, you know, it's it's that was a situation that, you know, that was a pivotal part as well because yeah. everybody was going I knew to you. Moana's there, I was there. Man. And I was young. Me and you were young. I think of how old you were. I think of how old I was. Man. And like, I started bro, going there when was, I was you 12. Was like, you was short too, bro. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> bro, 12. I, me- I remember walking up in the Bawanas and he had four turntables set up. Oh, beast mode. And I was like, wow. Oh. The speakers were banging and too. And he walk up in there, you know how he is? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And I'm saying to myself, four of them. He's saying, well, you work on two, I work on two. You work on four, I work on four. And I'm Man. Like, yeah. How do you work on four? That was the thing back then. Yeah. That was, it's like. And that's in the country. Yeah. Man, we banged that club well, see, out. W- w- like I said, when hip hop. I went to the first and one, it too. was packed. When was hip- it packed all the time? All the time. Every time. All the time, man. From 1 to 2 o'clock, here they come. All they the way to 4 and 5 in the morning. other clubs. We had people from Shreveport coming. Yep, to yep. Them. Everywhere. And that's yeah. deep down in the country. Everywhere. Deep down in the country, man. Everywhere. And we talking Pittsburgh, about. Pittsburgh, everywhere. Man, we talking about the Chub Rock, the Heavy D, the. Killed it. The all, YZ. That, all that. The YZ, the Planet Rocks. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, we, we was killed it. Back in the day, I was a beast on them turntables, oh, we bro. Was, I was loving every minute of it. <sighs> I was a beast do on them turntables. Do you still do any of that now? What? Um, uh, the, the, the old song? Or no, the scratch That's being the beast. You don't the have turn. to. Yeah. You, don't, it, yeah. you don't have to, but you still I'm gonna do I'm going to be honest. I'm a straight fool. <laughs> I'm a straight fool right now. Like, And that's the thing that everybody like about me. So my boy, you ain't changed a bit. I said, bro, this is me. I'm a brain. You know, I mean, this is what God gave me. God been blessing me all these years. I mean, I got to do me, you know. Yeah. There's no reason why I shouldn't be me. This is a blessing what I have. And the thing about it is something good. It's something good to be known for. Like, you know. When it's all when it's all said and done, people gonna be like, man, that goddamn K Rock used to jam his ass man. off, boy. They right, smoked that weed right. and jam Damn. his ass off. And I, I I have no problem with leaving that legacy behind. You know, for someone to tell it to my children, or you know, just just a conversation about RIP. You know, when it's all said and gone, because see, I'm on a mission to go to heaven anyway. Hey, I'm in a mission to go to uh, to go to heaven. At the same time, I'm also on a mission for my children to go to heaven. So Man. I got way more bigger responsibility in my community than people think. I got a whole clan. I got a whole How family. How many children do you have? I have 13 children, eight grandchildren. Shout out to all 13 of them, baby. Of Let's go. Man. Turn up. I just, I just had that vibe. Look, you know, know so many kids. people be, you know, you got to, people, you got to understand something. I'm a person that love hard. Yeah. So everyone that I was in a relationship with, I was with them. I had, I had, I had a child. I had children. Yeah. Every situation meant something because they are all doing so well right now. That's They're grown. What's up. You know, I got, I got a beautiful clan, but my mission is still not done. Wow. It's still not done. You, I, but I mean, it's never going to be done as long as you're still here. Exactly. I feel like I'm 25 now. That's why I be trying to tell everybody, like, y'all, I'm here. I'm not going nowhere. <laughs> you know how to put on a little weight or whatever, but I'm here. Yeah, and, good weight. Good weight. That, good, that's good living. I still got that same fire and that energy. I, I'm, I'm praying more, trying to do what God tell me to do. I'm trying to walk that pathway because I have to. I had to learn that certain things weren't for me. So, you know, you got a lot of people that will look at you and say, man, you Man, I'd have been on if I was you and this and another. I said, bro, I've been on. Exactly. What you saying? I've yeah. been on. And, and that's beautiful. I just didn't choose to buy a Lambo. I went and bought a crib. That's me. But you know what did, I'm saying? When did this change of mind, the way how you think now? When When did it kick in? This yeah, knowledge right here. What stage of your life did that happen? The, the, the three decades of hip hop, I'm going to say this last decade wow. in, the, in the last 10 years. Wow. Um, in the last 10 years, I really started seeing certain things, mm-hmm. going through things yeah, 
But then all of a sudden, I all of a sudden start paying attention. Oh, God did that. Man. Mm -hmm. God did that. Ain't that something? God did that. Mm -hmm. Then out of nowhere, he did something again. It messed you up, don't so it? So now I'm like, oh, okay. I, I'm, I'm getting it, you know. Man, funny um, stages of life. You know, a relationship that went bad, uh, a business relationship that went bad. You know, the last two jobs, I literally got fired for nothing. These yeah. just, you know, I chose to go out and work. You know, yeah. I changed but all for a couple of years. Everything that you go through in life is a lesson for whether, I said whether it's for you to learn or somebody else who's right. watching your life to learn. Right. But it's a lesson. It's it, it's all been a lesson. I mean, I worked at Take 5 All Change for two years. That's just a blessing. You know, you, you want to say what lesson it is? I changed my own all. That's it. I can change my own starter. I can change how to alternate. That's I can me. get my car. See, that's what I'm talking about. A tune up. Versus before all that, I was going to pay to get that t particular type of stuff done. Yeah, now, yeah. now I can go to the store, buy all the tools, and do that myself. You taught your kids how to do it too. Well, the thing about it is, my kids knew it before no, I, I did, <laughs> because of the, the, the because of their livelihood and what they went through. I spent a lot of my life not being in my kids' life mm -hmm. because of me chasing my dream, mm -hmm. and I had to take that as a blessing as well because now. I'm in a position where, hey, you can call daddy. We can have a conversation. You can pull up. We can eat dinner. We can do whatever. We can do whatever a father and a son or a father and a daughter can do. I'm still here. I'm not going anywhere. Um, it's not like I don't uplift them. I pray for them, and I've lift, I uplift them. I got two stepchildren now. Love them to death, you know. They kind of fill that gap of that daddyhood that I missed. Mm -hmm. And um, it's like... God is fixing that for me because my children are old enough to say, hey, Dad, how you doing? I ain't talked to you in a while. I'm, I'm, I'm able to have a relationship you with them. You don't have no bad blood between you and your kids, which of, is awesome. Of, of course not, and not even with their mothers. You know, it's like sooner or later, you got to get right with this situation. You know what I'm saying? Whether the other part wants to or not. Sooner or later, you just got to do what's right because at the end of the day, that's what's going to stand above all. It's so crazy the way how life is. You know, we... You're raised that you go to school, after you leave school, you whether you go to college or you get a job, you work hard to get what you need and when you whatever the goal is, you keep going, keep going till you get it. And once you get it, that's why a lot of people who when they're married, the men go out and work hard and they say, Okay, the kids are good as long as the mom is there taking care of them. Right. They don't realize how important presence is you know, it's very meaningful because then I learned how important it was when I lost my dad because when I reminisce and look back at the memories I can think yeah. about, it's not what they leave you. It, financial gain is not everything. It's the memories yeah. of we used to go fishing together. I was a tomboy. So we went hunting together. We went fishing together. We did all of that sort of stuff together, not the boys. I did. So I had all of those memories of him. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I tell people all the time, if you can spend time with your children, spend time with your children, right. build Amen. those memories because at the end of the day, when you give them wealth and everything that you've worked all your life for, because a lot of people say, well, I didn't have, so I made sure that my kids were good. Exactly. That's what they say. So at the end of the day, you give them all this money and you're dead and gone. They usually end up blowing it, going crazy with it because they don't know how to handle the money in the first place. Right. So you can't do that to them. Right. And, and, I'm, I'm a, and the thing about my kids... Um, each of them have their own particular talents mm -hmm. that they'll let be known to the world as we speak. Wow. And I can say that um, at this point, it's more of the time. It's not really financial because they've been going out getting that, their own money. I yeah. mean, my daughters, you know, my daughters are so beautiful. It takes money to, you know, to be beautiful. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I got one daughter that braids. You know, she's like one of the top braiders out there in Shreveport, you know, Shreveport in that area. She's been braiding for like 10 some odd years. Awesome. Wow. And, uh, you know, she's on she's on Facebook. She promotes that. I have another daughter that's a model. I have another daughter that's a security guard. Wow. You know, everybody's taking into their own. And now it's just more or less FaceTime. Daddy, what you doing? Oh, get ready to go to a podcast. Oh, okay, then. I just, you know... We have a great relationship now versus mm -hmm. if they were younger, it would be a different relationship. Yeah. With them being adults now, it's <clears throat> with them being adults, we kind of communicate on an adult level. Mm 
Wow. But I'm daddy and this son, this daughter, and this grandbaby, you know, so it, it's it's really good because I prayed on that a long time ago. Man, God will do it. Won't and, he do yeah, it? And he's still doing it. You know, he's still putting it all together. He's still putting it all together That's because, what he does. you know, the purpose in me and what I'm trying to do with my life, I'm still not done. There's still lots of things that I want to do. I still have dreams. Man. You, you, you wanted to, like I said, one of my guests that I love to have these type guests on. <laughs> you keep talking about God. See, that's my thing. Man, look. I'm being real because I come I come from different places. Let me tell you something, bro. God, let me tell you something. My father has whooped me enough to the point where I got it. You hear me? Already. Like, this, my career, I went out here. I've always been a good businessman, but I've always dealt with people who be on some other stuff which take me out of my character. Now I want to sue you, or now I got to wait outside the club of my money. All this extra stuff I went through when I just could have simply trusted in God, like, okay, the situation's going to work itself out. When you look back at it, you be like, oh, man, I, why did I do that for? And then I said, thank you, Lord, for bringing me through that. Mm -hmm. But he already had it, he already had it worked out. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I'm strong on that right now because no man on earth can give me what I need I can I can I can ask for cash out. Give me a hundred dollars. Okay, somebody might send me a hundred dollars. I'm gonna spend that hundred dollars. But what God gave me, that's for the rest of my life. life. Amen. That's for the rest of my life. And then a lot of times God gives us something for us to pass on to somebody there else. Exactly. There it is. So when you open yourself for that, now now you now you on you now you on the right side. Like I said, I'm trying to stay on the right side Doing of this situation job. of life and its spirituality because it's all spiritual. Man, I used to get so hyped when I hear you on the radio. I hear your voice come through. I said, "That's my guy right there." He, he always do drops. You don't you don't know. See, I, I listen ninety seven nine or one hundred four or something. I hear my boy voice come on there. I know my guy voice. No, yeah. but his voice is unique. Yeah, but I know it. Like I, it, it don't matter about that. I'm yeah. just telling you. And when I heard crazy, it, bro. I, it don't matter where I was at. I worked here for twenty some years. I know my guy. I know I'm connected, and it, it was a sense of. Man, that's that's us. Yeah. I felt like we done we yeah. doing something. I Not know. just you doing something. Yeah, I'm I didn't being know I had a voice. That's another part of my livelihood where people don't know. Like I said earlier, I was a scratcher. I could DJ in the club and keep the club going, but I never did talk. I didn't know I had a no, voice. You had a voice. When I left, actually it was Marshall. You know, I lived in Marshall for about two years. Or yeah, yeah, relationship. yeah. When I left Marshall and went to Shreveport. I met a man named Cat Daddy's. I know Cat Daddy. Yeah. yeah. Now you you at home. He, he passed yeah, on. Yeah. He was the one that he's the one that gave me that he put that sauce in me. Yeah. It was like, boy, why you don't talk? I said, talk about what? <laughs> he's like, when you when you when you when you're doing your thing, you need to talk. I said, talk about what? What am I supposed to say? Because I did. I never was a talker. <laughs> I never was a talker. I, you know, I would say, hey, y'all welcome to the club, blah blah blah. But that was it, you know. I'm at, I mean, I used to talk maybe two or three times a night. That was it. Yeah. But at that time, it was more musical. You no, know, but Rory, were, Rory would musical. talk. You know Rory Man, would. Man, but he, get Rory it. plays a part get in that it. as well. <laughs> he plays a part in that well. That's what made him who he was because he was one of them DJs that rocked oh, and he gonna talk. talk. I wasn't on that. I was on some Oh, I scratch, remember. You know? I remember, too. You're so I started talking, not knowing that people was like, damn. You got a unique voice. And I'm like, what's right. so unique about it? L little did I know. Okay, say so I need you to do you a voice over. You hear that voice everywhere. Yeah. You don't hear it's it. different. And then I got partners. Be, they, they be firing me up on the microphone now. They be trying to talk like me in the club. Fire me up. <laughs> Shout out to OG Head. Yeah, I got you, boy. <laughs> He's the MC over at Laurelland. He be firing me up. Talking about, we got DJ K Rock in the building. Already. He trying to talk like me like that's Say, my big homie. You gonna it's crazy, be, you, bro. You, it's Cat Daddy from K104 do it too. What's up, Cat Daddy? He so, do it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Who are you a better impression of you? Cat Daddy. <laughs> Cat Daddy. Let so, me pull up. Let me pull up at DG's and this a remote. He doing a remote. Oh, all right, everybody. We got DJ K Rock up here to keep it at one thousand all the time. I'm like, I right, can't. You sure? So, right. so you, it's a difference in you because you can come from now. You, you, we was in, we was in East Texas, but twenty years of his legacy, maybe a more, is here in Dallas. Yeah. So it, we, we was, we was in, we would, we. Because you started so young, mm -hmm. we could ride for almost 20 down there. Yeah. yeah I'm being real, 12 to 15. It's, it's been 35 solid 35 years. 35 solid years. Yeah. So we could ride 12 to 15 down there and then yeah, ride 20 
parts are 17 to 20 up here. Yeah. That, that's because I know, because I know where you come from, because I come from the same type exactly. feel. I'm yeah. just in the streets I, and I, hustling. I, we, you know, we, we you know, we really won from here. So, I mean, when I came here, I was introduced to a situation where I end up, you know, well, I was in Longview making three, four hundred dollars a week. Mm -hmm. I ended up coming here into a situation where I was making three and four hundred dollars a night. A night, that's it. And at that time, I was in transition. <laughs> it wasn't nothing to come on and shoot up here and get that money. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at that time, like we discussed early, shout out to DJ Do Right, Do Right, and Fresh. Shout out to Fresh and shout Inside out to the Jack Frost. Yeah, that's it. They're my guys. That was my first family when I came here. Say, Do man, Do Right used to cut my hair. I was staying. Do right, tell me. I was staying in the hotel. Do right, say, man, you got to stay in the hotel, man. You can room with me and split the rent. <laughs> mm -hmm. At that time, I was I was living with Do right. You know, what I'm saying he would cut my hair when I had her. Boy, I never forget that day when Do right never <laughs> said. And Do right, you remember this? He gonna laugh. He was like, Rock. Uh, I, I can't fade it up too much further, man. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, down. man, I only take it on off. So, <laughs> you know, it, we we got real history, man. man. When, when I came to when I came to the city in two, in in 2000, not knowing that because of the type of person I was as a DJ, I was the type of person not knowing the situation. Like an artist come up to the club at that time, they had CDs. Artists come up there talking about, man, I got this song. Will you play this song? I didn't know anything about the politics. I'm from I'm raw from somewhere else. Yeah. Where I come from, yeah. somebody bring you a record, you put it on, list to it, and you play it. Yeah. So that's what I started doing. Um, little did I know that that went so far with everybody else. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. say, man, this DJ and people Tom, fool, he play your record, you pull up. But people Tom's wasn't the one the one wasn't the was it the spot? It was Gigi's. That was the spot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The yeah. way I won, I like you say, I, I wasn't on the radio, but I was the one that did the commercial. That's what he done. Oh. The, concept, he done the concept was, let me do the talking on the radio because I'm going to be the one doing the talking in the club. Yeah, yeah. Took off. I, I even had a slogan that at that time. That's I used to hear it. I, I, I had a slogan hear at that time, DJ K-Rock, I keep it 1,000 yeah. all the time. That was my slogan. <laughs> and... Little did I know, here come all the CD after CD after CD after CD. Little did I know, it was Doski G, uh, JB, T Cash. All them dudes. Mr. Pookie, Mr. Lucha, love. DSR, all these people. I didn't know who they were. Yeah. I did not know who you they just were. All love. I know is they were bringing me records and I was playing it. Wow. Little did I know, I it, it, it got Impacted. me into Yeah. Impacted you know, it's like, career. And I didn't realize that until people started telling me, to my man, I remember you played my record and dab me up. And I actually don't remember you, but... You remember me, so that meant something to me. So now I got to sit back. I got to regroup and get my head together because I'm on. But a lot of times, this it. is their first you know, record, so they're not going to forget it. Never, never forget right it. to this day, people still... Last night, one dude told me last night, he said, Say, Rock, I appreciate you opening that door, bro. Right. He a chef. I remember... Back in the day when I was DJing, I was like, this is my partner right here, man. He cooked blah, 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 blah. Little did I know that me saying that on the microphone helped to people. His, helped his business. He shot, and he remembered that, bro. That was like 17, 18 years That's ago. That's love, bro. So now I be like, it's, it's scaring me on how God is showing me things. Now he's showing me just how valuable I am. So now I'm on one like, yeah. I did Because I did that. I did that. And it wasn't easy. No. It was a struggle. No, yeah. it was a struggle. I, no matter where you, you was you know, at, if I seen how you, how was it a struggle though? Go ahead, my, man. Yeah. During the course of my career, I lost my granny, I lost my mom. You know, my mom was the person I was really trying to impress. Yeah, that's yeah. what everybody. That's your why. That that's, was your that's why. why. I did what I did. That was your why. I wanted my mama to be proud of me. You know, and you were and your mama's boy. Pretty much, <laughs> and she uh, she told me she said. You know, I am proud of you. You know, you didn't, you know, you're doing this thing. You, you know, you stuck with it. You're going to keep on doing it. And, you know, I'm just proud of you. You're doing good for yourself with it. You know, that was good enough for me. My mama was a woman of Scholastic. She was a teacher, resource teacher. Yeah. Uh, actually, when she was here in Dallas, you know, just a little bit of history on my mom. My mom taught, uh, she taught at MHMR for uh -huh. 10 years. She left MHMR and went out to uh, Skyline when it, uh, she teached out there for about four or five years. Now, this was going on in the age one to 15 span. Wow. Okay. Because when we left Dallas, mm -hmm. we went to East Texas, she started teaching school out there wow. as well. Wow. 
So that was always the thing. You know, my mom was school teaching him. I'm skipping school and going to break dance, you know. That was going on at yeah, that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I guess I left all that alone and I chased my dream. Wow. I, I went ahead and I chased my dream and it came, I, you know, it took me, it took me away from home. It got me from out of these six because I, my, you know, mind you now, I was a person that always went out too. I didn't just go out prospecting, but I had my turntables and my crates in the truck because mm-hmm. it was just something about, I'm going to always be ready in case somebody want me to DJ. Did you go by, you used to go by Chokes down there in Marsh? Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Choke, man. Much love to him. Frank Scott and all them out there. Frank they, Scott. Man, look, that's that what I'm saying. Yeah, there, yeah, yeah, yeah. But see, they all still doing their day they all still down doing there. They still down yeah, there. Lil Pete, shout out to Lil Pete. Yeah, he's running man. Frank Scott now. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's my in, guy. That's why I say I ran into him at Derek's spot. Yeah, last yeah, yeah. Year, year before last one. Derek got the spot. We yeah. all linked up down there. It was a good little He probably reunion. had on one of our outfits from out of here because I done took it down there and handed it to him. I say, man. That's what I do. Look. If yeah. I'm not mistaken, he did pull up here. I think he did say, man, I got to come out there and buy me some clothes. Yeah, he come so, see me. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's how that's I go. East Texas Connect, baby. Say, man, we always did dress, though. Listen, you know man, we all we got, baby. Thing, man. We know? all we got. Yeah, shirt that mess shoes. Say, man, man. <laughs> hey, that, that's what that's what we did. Um, yeah. So, so the music, man. How do you feel about the music right now? What, what you're hearing? The difference between then and now? And I know we're we not, we not, you know, I love the new music and the old music, but what far as the transition? How do you feel? It's it's it, how do you feel it's going? You 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 be with Baby at the listening party. Yeah. I already I watch. I know where you at. Shout out to Baby. I got my eye, up, yeah bro? yeah. He over there today getting a massage over there touching skin. <laughs> I know exactly where he at. He can't. He ain't gonna be able to get around me. Just tell him. Say he knew you was at touching yeah, skin. That's, yeah, that's family right there, man. You know we so, got history too, and I was I out of street And, and I didn't even way. know that. You yeah, know it's we got crazy. History, real history. Oh, I yeah. believe you. I'm talking about the beginning of the. Of the era for Bebe, I yeah. was there. You was there. I watched it start off. I really? Watched it jump. Yeah, I watched it jump off. Man, I watched it jump off. I mean, we got a we got a relationship. That's my boy. We got a relationship beyond the industry. The industry. I was there. Them roll with them Ryan Shreveport and everything. Come on, ride when we pull up at Doc Cooley and Jazz and Jeff and them little old spot where they. Those were DJs in Shreveport yeah. then too. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. We got history, man. Yeah. That's bro. You know, I'm bro. from you know I'm from right there, uh, up from Shreveport by Vivian, Louisiana, right. but I'm in Smithland. Smith- I'm in, I'm over yeah, there by where the horse track man, used to be. Yeah, Stop playing, man. Yeah. You know that's my hood. Yeah, gas similar to be exact. Yeah, so you know it's, it's, y'all don't know nothing about that boy. That, <laughs> that's, see that deep down there. You oh yeah. <laughs> say don't get it say, twisted. We wearing jewelry and rolling rims down everything, there. Everything. We ain't miss nothing. We just in the country with you. Say man, for so, real. So the thing was, <laughs> did you? When you when Lil Vic was in there DJing in 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 Buana, uh, you and Rory influenced him had to because he was younger. Yeah, he was man, younger than very, you. Very very much younger. Lil Vic was more into girls. You oh know? yeah yeah but yeah. That was his that was his thing. You know DJing to get to the girls. girls. That was his thing. You know because that was Lil Vic. You know Lil Lil cute Lil handsome. You know what I'm saying that Rory <laughs> Rory that's Rory nephew. Nephew. Touches, yeah you know? yeah yeah. You know he played his role. That's what his role was. <laughs> You know, but at the same time, he took that to another level. Another became level. something. Yes, sir. With it, so you know, the, you know, the influence is is is. is man. It's crazy the relationships, the yeah. people that you've touched, man. You yeah. know, in thirty five years, that's a long time, man. A legacy. Yeah. You know, we when we uh when when I talked to Fresh, he was like, man, you gotta get K Rock on there. Yeah, I he say he me. say he said you gotta get K Rock. Bro, I'm coming to get that car too, man. I'm trying to buy this car from him. <laughs> Nah, I'm just being honest. I'm trying to get out of this car note situation, but he got a he got a whip. I'm finna go down there. And hey, that hey, from hey, him, that's bro. that's my that's, that's my people, guy, man. man. Like like Say, man, this. I love Fresh to death, man. Fresh I'm, the one that made us look. I was still mixing with. He CDs, told me that. He told me that. And he was like, "Rock, what is you doing?" He loved I was e. like, This is this is thing right here. Say he gave me one. This man wow. gave me. He gave me a deal. He said here. He had virtual DJ on it. He said, "Man, learn how to use this, bro. That right there, you you." You know, I was the last. Everybody used to get on me when I come set up and get ready to DJ. Got the crates. No, it was CDs. Oh, yeah, CD CDs. books. The books, yeah. They like, dang, K-Rock, you ain't on Serato. No, I ain't going to do no computer, man. I don't blah, blah, blah. That's how I was. <laughs> Little did I know. Boy, that saved your man, time, didn't it? Fresh gave me that laptop. It was on after that. He posted on Facebook one time. He said, man, what I get this fool a laptop for? <laughs> He was already a fool with the CDs and turn man. I should have never gave him all that. Man, that's him. I man. took that and ran with it. You know what? 
That's crazy, man, because all y'all got y'all special elements. Frost, he got his thing where he the business mind. He always yep. trying to set something up with the business. You did your thing. You the voice, really, to be honest with you, because yep. Fresh don't talk much. Sure he, don't. Yeah, I'm telling you, he, really he love the music, and if you get him in that booth, he going to go. He, he gonna gonna do his thing. He going to jam. jam out all night. Y'all ain't got to yep. do nothing. And then do right. Do right, my boy, man. He'll get on the mic. He'll do, talk. Do right is an I'm going to tell you something. He love it. Do right is an entertaining type DJ. Fresh is a DJ that a crank that he talked through the music. Yeah. Me and Do Right kind of alike because I like to talk with my music now. Like yeah. I, I rock and mix. But you used to be like Fresh. I used to be like Fresh. <laughs> you started out that way. Anything. And, you know, shout out to my boy because not only did he, you know, got me, he gave me my first laptop and got me into the game like that, but he also, you know, counseled me on the technical issues yeah, along the way. Yeah, he's good. He's good. Since then, I've had. Five, six Mac yep, laptops. Yep, yep. I've had all type of laptops, and I always call them like before I even buy them. Say, bro, can I, I Facetime? Should I buy this? He'd be like, Nah, Rock is not gonna do you no he good. good. He so, good. He good. It's a know, gift. He, he got a gift. No, you realize. The last time he got on me, he said, Man, stop selling the Macs, K Rock. Because they still doing? be good. I'm yeah, telling you. He said, Man, get you one and stop selling them. Yep, I'm like, all yep. right. So now he how, right. How often you be trying to? Sell I go them? like every six years. The thing about it is, is I have a laptop for a whole year, and it just I'll be ready to buy a new one. <laughs> the thing about it is, see, this is the thing about me. I'm a shopper. I shop DJ stuff. I'm going to go to pawn shops. I'm going to go to Guitar Center. I'm going to go to Sam at. I go everywhere just looking to buy DJ stuff. That's that's my toy. That's you my enjoy thing. doing it. Yeah. You can so, never have enough? No, nah, not really. <laughs> and, and that's because technology is changing. Like, this, making it so convenient for us now, you know. But I always tell guys, hey, man. Get on set of turntables. Before you get to bragging and blah, 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 blah. Just get on set of turntables. You've seen a lot of these dudes come in the game. Just like, uh, what's the other little dude's name that's on K104 used to come here? Mr. Hit That. Mr. Hit That. He used love to, Hit That, man. Yeah. I love Hit That. I'm, I'm proud of him. You've I'm seen so all of, of these bro. evolving yeah. in, in the game. Man, we say, he'll tell you, we had that, man, we had that, we had a one-on-one, -on -one and I, I had to give him that inspiration because it was a point in time he asked me something and I gave him my heart. I was like, say, bro, you need to, don't worry about what everybody else is talking about. Go out there and do what you do. Wow. Let people love you for who you are and what you bring to the table. After that, you know, that he is. You know That's what I'm it. saying? So, you know, I'm proud of him and he, he knows that. He knows that conversation that we had because he was at a point, he felt some type of way about a previous situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, man, let that go, bro. Gotta let it go. You gotta let, let it go. go. And, and, and do, do take off and do your thing. Next thing you know, I'm in Park Ave. This dude walking on the rails, on the microphone, got the whole crowd. I'm like, he gone. <laughs> he gone. He gone. Like, he, like he for he real doing zone. this yeah. right now. Yeah. Like, then I went up in the V Live. I'm like, man, my boy then took off. Then when I heard him on K104, ah, oh, bro. It's on. It's up. It just made me feel good. That you was able no, to see the process yeah, and be a part of it. From that conversation, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That's a good so thing. I'm, I'm really I'm, I'm really proud of him. I'm proud of Baby as well. I ain't gonna lie I, to I know, you. I know how you started out. Yeah. I'm gonna so, be, I'm gonna get Baby on here one way or the other. I'm, I, come, I got huh? a plaque. I got a plaque for that dude. And and and, and today I got a plaque for you. Huh? We giving out roses while you're you like, here. Huh? Yeah, well, we got we 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 love over here. It's a whole you different level. You like, huh? Yeah, yeah, we be blessing wow. over here. So we always we, what we do is we the first podcast that give our blessings to to the city to the ones who really grind it. Yeah, that's how we do it. That's the only way to do it. We, and so that's the way. Let me tell you something, man. If everybody start, you know. The ones who are in position, loving the way that they should, man. Right. This will be happening more than now. That's what's wrong with our world right now. Yeah. We, you know, we'd have forgot how to love. So so we 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 always get a plaque out over yeah. here, don't we? Yes, sir. Okay, I, she ain't gonna let me give it to you on air. We gonna I show you can you hand it to him one time while he on <laughs> I, I mean, I know you're gonna give it to him. Okay. Just let him see the cause cause it, you yeah, present it to him wow. right here. So he can see the plaque because at the end of the day, it, it pretty much hold it up to the camera over. <laughs> because what this, I what, what it is, man, it's just showing that this guy done put that grind down for thirty five years or more, yeah, man. man. And and, and uh, is he not deserving of it? Very. We got to give you roses yeah. while you're here, bro. And it's a beautiful thing, man, just to walk up to, for somebody to walk up to the booth, especially when I be in Longview on the yeah. weekends. Yeah. And they be like, "What's okay, see? You know, 
If you call me KC, that you means know you me. know me. Man, I've been with you since. That's the crazy part about me and you. We've been together longer than I knew anybody. Yeah. And, 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 and it's, it's crazy. And it feels good just to still have that. You know, that person still had that love for you. Like, boy, I remember, you don't remember we used to rock out the Dreamland Inn? Yeah, man, I remember we used to rock out the Dreamland Inn. I always tell a joke, say, I man. had her then. I had a Jerry girl, you know. Say, man, you might, you weren't there that night. I had to fight man. my way out of the Imperial Club. I had to fight my way up out of there, nigga. I like man, left one shoe. That's the thing, yeah. bro. I done DJed in so many places. You know I mean, it's sad that that's a part of what happens in the club from time to time. It's something that can be, it can, it can be controlled, it can be dealt with, but you know, it's you know for a place for people to go and party and have a good time, then it turn into something else, and that's the, that's the sad part about it. No, real and, talk. And you know you be trying to figure out what make you would come to the club to do and act that. up. Man, you know, I just like I say we appreciate but, you, man. We yeah, love you, bro. Is, we wish you much success. And at the end of the day, we know already that we gave our roses while we were here, yeah, exactly. and we know that hey man, if ain't nobody done it, we done it, and I love that man, I, I, I got one up on this, you man, man. love the last city. time I got one it was on my birthday uh, 2016 wow my, my classmate AB out there had a little club, and he was like rock, come uh, DJ for me man, we're gonna have a birthday party, whatever, cool so I had my little birthday party man, he gave me a trophy, like that you want to wow. give you a trophy, you know, to let you know yeah, we you, love you. We love you. You know, and the, it's like, you know, to have something to show. You know, we don't look, get a lot of things to no, show in no. this business unless you're getting a Grammy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or yeah. something like that, you but, know but, what but I'm But at saying? the end but of like, the day, we can like beat that, bro. Me, we can, you know what I'm hey, about? come like, on now, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm sort of, we sort of go to the spot tonight, boy. And, and we, celebrate. I'm going to be like, Because <laughs> <laughs> I did that with my trophy. That's when they gave me When they gave me my trophy in Longview, I had that trophy up in every club. I DJ. Wow. Everybody looked at it and I was like, like, man, they gave it to my hometown, Lifetime Achievement. Wow, Award. that's what it is. And everybody's like, yeah, OG. So, man. you know, I, it, 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 this really does mean a lot. You know what I'm man. saying? Hey, man, now, we, you know, it's the least hard we to could have do, bro. something to show. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. It's the least we could do, man. Say, man, that's Boss Talk 101, right. man. Rocking out with you. And we out. DJ K Rock, we here at Boss Talk 101 would love to present you with this award just to tell us tell you how much we appreciate the work and the time you have put into this jockey industry because I'm telling you I've learned so much about this industry I really didn't know a lot about it except from when you go to a club you hear them and you're like oh okay but y'all really control the mood of any club any situation you're in I've heard about instances where it was a fight broke out. Fight broke out or anything like that. And DJ came and he played it and he settled it in yeah. the club. So I love the fact that y'all have that much power with your music and you use it in a constructive way. And I love what you were saying about God and how God touched your life. Right. So we would love to present this award just to tell you how much we love you and we appreciate the work you've put. Hey, what does it say? It says. Get it, it together. Okay. <laughs> I'm a DJ K Rock, aka Mr. Kenneth W. Clark, which is government name, mm -hmm. <laughs> in recognition of your service to the disc jockey industry in Texas for more than 30 years, a true pioneer. Me. 2021. Thank you. Well, he's a true pioneer. Say, man, Very we're giving much. our roses while they're here, bro. That's what it's all about, man. Yeah. Blessing the ones who pretty much done blessed us. Thank you very much. It's a blessing, man. Yeah, we we'll get the exception speech right now. What is it? <laughs> well, it feels good to be recognized. Uh, finally, uh, I was already prepared to, like, you know, continue this journey to uh, play my part and what was laid out for me to play in order to give artists clarity to. Uh, pass on good vibes and advice and the spirituality to those who need it. You know, it's, it's deeper than just being a DJ. And, you know, that's what make it so great, you know what I'm saying, to be a person that people really look up to uh, beyond the music. And I'm thankful for this, you know what I'm saying? And I'm still going. I don't have any plans on stopping to the great man himself say so. Wow. But, uh, much thanks to everyone out there that's been supporting me all these years. I'm still at it. Uh, uh, thanks to God for everything, for his guidance and, 
you know, this is this is a real spiritual game going on right now. Wow. Get it together and get it right wow. and let them blessings flow in because that, that's what God wants us to have. Mm -hmm. And uh you know, I'm reaching out to you if you need me. I'm, 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 I'm here. You know, you don't have to go through security, <laughs> and you don't have to go through any obstacles to get at me. Just look me up on social media, man. Hit okay. me up. And what's your name on social media? My social media name right on right now on Instagram is at djk underscore roc, and on the book is my whole government name, Kenneth K Rock Clark. Holler at me, Amen. you know what I'm saying? My my advice, my spirituality, my energy is yours if you need it. Wow. And once again, thanks guys, man, I appreciate man. this, man. Hey man, that's what yeah. we're doing, man. That's how we're doing it, Boss Talk 101, man.